In this video, we're going to learn how to create a plugin for the Elgato Stream Deck using C Sharp. The Elgato Stream Deck is an LCD keyboard that allows you to display information and to put actions behind the key. Elgato describes their product as a USB peripheral providing several dedicated programmable keys. The plugin consists of one or more actions that can be attached to any programmable key. At the end of this video, you'll be able to write your first Stream Deck plugin yourself. Hi, I'm a software engineer with more than 10 years of experience with the .NET platform. If you want to improve as a software developer and learn about .NET development, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. But let's start with the fundamentals about how to create a plugin for the Elgato Stream Deck using C Sharp. Elgato provides official SDKs for JavaScript, C++ and Objective-C. There is no official SDK for the .NET platform. But Jeff Fritz created the Stream Deck Toolkit as an open source SDK for .NET. In this video, we'll be creating our plugin using the Stream Deck Toolkit. Let's take a look at the Stream Deck Toolkit on GitHub. The Stream Deck Toolkit is a .NET standard library, contains a project template and offers tools for building extensions to the Elgato Stream Deck. We need to have the .NET Core SDK in version 2.2 or above in our computer. If you don't have it, you should install it now. The download link is in the video description below. You should also have the Stream Deck software installed. It doesn't matter if you own a physical Stream Deck but you need the Stream Deck software to run the plugin. Let's start by downloading and installing the project template provided by the Stream Deck Toolkit. We can download and install it using the .NET CLI. We use the following command that you can also grab in the video description below. After the installation is completed, we create a new folder and name it Random Number Generator. It's the name of the plugin we create in this video. Next, we want to generate the project using the installed Stream Deck Toolkit project template. We can do so by changing directories into the newly created folder and executing the following command. Stream Deck plugins need to have a unique UUID in reverse DNS format. I use the domain of my website for this video. Make sure to use your own domain to create your plugins. Also, make sure that the name is not too long. Next, we want to open the project using Visual Studio 2019. We launch Visual Studio and select the project file generated by the template. Visual Studio creates a solution file that we can save in the same project folder. Let's take a quick look at the project structure. We have an image folder that contains all the images that are used within the Stream Deck software. We have a model that holds the data configured in the property inspector and we have the property inspector itself. It's the user interface that users see when they select your plugin in the Stream Deck software. We have a short program.cs file that starts our application and we also have the random number generator action.cs file that contains the business logic of our plugin. Let's take a look at the manifest.json file that describes the plugin. It contains the name of our action, the UUID of the plugin, and much more information for the plugin engine. Now let's compile the project and install the plugin to see it in action. We open a PowerShell console running as administrator and change directories until we are in the project folder of a random number generator plugin. To install the plugin, we execute the register plugin and start streamdeck.ps1 file. Sometimes the Stream Deck software launches after the installation and sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't, start it yourself. One quick note here. My Windows is running in German and I couldn't change the language of the Stream Deck software. It seems like the software is tied to the operating system language. I make sure that you understand what we're doing nonetheless. On the right side of the screen, we see all the available actions. There are default actions that come with the Stream Deck software itself. We can add additional actions by installing plugins. We scroll down to see our installed plugin at the bottom of the list. 
we can drag and drop it to the screen on the left to assign it to an empty programmable key. On the lower half of the screen, we can see the properties that we can set. Setting a number to the counter value field currently has no effect. We'll talk about why that's the case shortly. But before we do that, we want to see all the available and installed plugins. We click on the bottom right to open the plugin list. We switch to the installed plugins and see our plugin within the list. The description is currently missing, but we'll make sure to change that soon. Now let's head back into Visual Studio to edit the manifest JSON file and to fix the plugin action. First, let's change the tooltip we see when we hover over our extension in the StreamTech plugin installation dialog. I give it the description of returns a random number and displays it on the Stream Deck. Next, we need to fix an error in our plugin setup. Somehow the project template generates the wrong UUID for our plugin action. To fix it, we take the UUID generated in the manifest JSON file and copy it over to our random number generator action class. Those UUIDs have to be the same for the plugin engine to know what action to execute when a button is pressed on the Stream Deck. Next, we want to set the plugin category to random numbers. We'll stick with the current image for the category. If you want to change this image, you can change the file in the images category folder of the solution. And let's change the author field to my name. Now we need to fix the code path. The code path contains the name of the assembly that should run when the plugin is used. If you want to run the same program for both Mac and Windows, you can use the code path property. If you're going to have separate definitions, use the Mac and Windows specific properties. You can read more about it in the manifest.json description on the Elgato website. The link is in the video description below. Finally, let's change the description of the plugin to something more related to our random number generator. We stick with the default plugin icon, but if you want to change it, you can change the plugin icon.png file in the images category solution folder. Last, we want to remove the macOS section of the supported operating systems. Our plugin will be available only for Windows clients to keep things simpler for this tutorial. Great, now let's build the application again and run the deployment script using the PowerShell script. In Stream Deck, we can now see the category we set in the manifest.json file. If we go to the installed plugins, we see a random number generator plugin with the description and the author's information we set before. If we go back to the key configuration, we see the number 5 on our button. Let's change the counter value in the properties of our key to 12. Now we see the number 12 on the screen. We fix the link between our manifest and the action clause. Now every time the code implemented in the action class is executed whenever we change the property of our plugin action. We can also click on the button, which will increase the number by 1. Back in Visual Studio, we want to implement the plugin action to generate random numbers. Let's start by creating an instance of the system.random class and storing it in the RNG variable. To receive a random number, we call the next method with min and max values defining the range. Let's say we want the number to be between 1 and 100. Next, we want to display the number on the screen. We already have access to the connection manager class, which allows us to set the title of a button. We change the code to display the random value instead of the counter variable. With everything in place, let's remove all the generated code we don't need. Let's build and deploy the application one more time. Back in the Stream Deck software, we see the default value 0 on the screen. When I hit the button on my physical Stream Deck, we see a randomly generated number between 1 and 100. That leaves us with a counter value configuration that we don't need anymore. Let's get rid of it and do something more suitable instead. Let's jump into the counter settings model and rename it to random number settings model. We don't need the counter property, let's remove it. We want to store the min and max values defining the range of what numbers we are generating. We create a property for each of those values and initialize them with zero. Let's go back to the implementation of our plugin action. 
We can now use the variables defined in the model and use them as arguments for the next method. We have two places in this clause where the counter variable was used before. For our plugin we don't need those anymore and replace the values with zero. With the model and the action in place, we want to change the plugin action's appearance. We open the property inspector HTML file. In the HTML template, we're changing everything from counter to mean value. After that, we copy the code section and add another field for the max value of the number range. As you saw in the HTML template, we use JavaScript to read the values from the user interface and set it on the model and vice versa. Therefore, we need to change the implementation in the property inspector JS file as well. When everything is changed, we build and deploy the plugin one more time. Back in the Stream Deck software, we see our min value and max value fields below the title field. Let's set the min value to 5 and the max value to 15. When I press the button on my stream deck, a random number in the configured range will appear on the button. In the plugin selection view, we still have the generated name for our plugin action. Let's go back to Visual Studio and change it. Back in the manifest.json file, we set the name property to generate random number. Back in the stream deck software once again, we now see the name in the plugin selection view. That's it from the implementation of our first Stream Deck plugin and its single action. The next step is to share the plugin with other users. We want to make our plugin available to all Stream Deck users. The current process for getting a plugin listed in the Stream Deck software is to build a distribution package and send it to streamdeck.elgato at corsair.com. Let's create a distribution package. Elgato offers a distribution tool that allows us to build a file with the extension .streamdeck plugin. It's a compressed archive that all plugins use that are shared within the store. Make sure to download the distribution tool for your platform, either Windows or Mac OS. For me, it made the most sense to copy the tool into the app data folder where all my installed streamdeck plugins are stored on my Windows computer. Usually the plugins are saved in the appdata slash ilgato slash streamdeck slash plugins folder. If we try to create a package from our current plugin, we will receive the following error. The plugin has an invalid unique identifier. The unique identifier must be a uniform type identifier that contains only lowercase alphanumeric characters. The string must be in reverse DNS format. Unfortunately, this is another small bug in the project template. We currently use the name ch.claudibanasconi.rng.number.defaultpluginaction as our UUID. First of all, it gets truncated at the end because it is too long. Second, it uses uppercase letters that are not allowed. To fix both issues, we're going to rename the UUID to ch.claudibanasconi.rng.number. After that change, we can run the command to build the package again. We need to make sure to use the new name of the plugin. Because we changed the name of the action, the name of our plugin folder has also changed. You can find the command to export the package in the Elgato documentation. Great, it worked. We received the message the plugin has been successfully exported. Now let's change directories into the release folder and check the file. We can now see that we have a file with the .streamdeck plugin file extension. We can now share this distribution package on our website or we can send it to Elgato to be featured in their streamdeck plugin store. As we can see in the documentation, to add the plugin to the streamdeck plugin store, we need to send an email to streamdeck.elgato@corsair.com and attach the file. I haven't distributed the plugin created in this video but I already have a few plugins in the store, and a few more will follow soon. In this video, you learned how to create a plugin for the Elgato Stream Deck using C-Sharp. There are many different parts to it and it might be a little overwhelming at first. 
It took me a few hours to figure out how all those parts work together. Don't beat yourself up if you have to come back and rewatch parts of this video. The intent behind creating this video was to serve you as a reference and to allow you to check back when you get stuck. Let me know in the comments below if this video was helpful. If you have any questions, put them in the comments as well and I try to help out as much as I can. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss new videos about .NET development. I'm currently focusing on Blazor. And check out the link to the upcoming Blazor course in the video description below. Thank you and see you in the next.